Now that we covered the 16 gigabyte variants of the 9060, let's take a look at the 8 gigabyte variant and see how it compares. And for these tests, we're going to be using a PowerColor RX 9060 XT Reaper 8 gigabyte. Currently the smallest card you can get from AMD, measuring just 20 centimeters long, 11 centimeters high, and weighing 509 grams. This card is also only 41 millimeters wide, which makes it a two slot card. Using the same single 8 pin connector from the other 9060 XT 16 gigabyte variants and doesn't have any RGB lights. And quickly taking a look at our test system, we're using an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D paired with the MSI X870E Carbon, using 32 gigabytes of 6200 memory, and running Windows 11 with the latest press driver from AMD. And starting off the tests at 1080p, if you are getting an 8GB variant of the card, this is probably where you'll spend the most time, since this is where you'll get the best performance. And we can see at 1080p, the RX 9060 XT 8GB comes in basically tied with the RTX 3070 and RTX 4060 Ti's, with the RTX 5060 being slightly slower, and the RX 9060 XT being about 5% faster. Most of this difference comes from the PowerColor Reaper having a lower power limit than the reference RX 9060 XT, at least at this resolution. It also means that the RTX 5060 Ti 8GB is about 12% faster, though that card does benefit from having the same power limits as its 16GB brother. Enabling ray tracing at 1080p does increase the overall VRAM usage, but how it affects each card is a bit more interesting. Now the Power Color Reaper pulls ahead of the RTX 5060 Ti 8GB and well ahead of the RTX 5060, being basically tied with an RX 6800 XT, almost matching an RTX 4060 Ti 16GB, a card it was also basically tied with without ray tracing. The RX 9060 XT 16GB does expand its lead ever so slightly and is now 7% faster. Bumping up the resolution to 1440p without ray tracing, something even AMD recommends is better suited for the 16GB card, but it does seem that the AMD cards do a little bit better than Nvidia when saddled with 8GB of memory. With the same 5% performance differential between the 9060 16GB and 8GB remaining, but the 9060 XT 8GB does gain on all the newer Nvidia cards, with the RTX 5060 now being 5% slower and the RTX 5060 Ti now being 11% faster. That amounts to about 10 FPS at 1440p, so definitely enough that you might notice it depending on the game, but all these cards were able to deliver above 65 FPS on average. And because we do get this question a lot, average FPS and relative performance will not always match, since for the average, a couple high FPS games can skew the average upwards, whereas for the relative performance, we normalize all the numbers before making our calculations. None of these cards target 4K, but if you were going to play at 4K with an 8GB card, you would probably want to pick the AMD. The RTX 5060, which was once only 3% slower, is now 17% slower than the PowerColor Reaper 8GB, which also somehow manages to outperform the RTX 4060 Ti 16GB, even though that card has double the VRAM. It's also now basically tied with the RTX 5060 Ti 8GB, and while it is technically 1% faster, that lead used to be 12% at 1080p. That's not to say though that the 9060 XT 8GB didn't lose any performance going up to 4K, since the 16GB variant is now 9% faster, and the 5060 Ti 16GB is now 18% faster. The 5060 Ti 8GB does do a little bit better when looking at the minimum FPS, managing 32 FPS compared to the 29.7 of the Power Color Reaper. But in both cases, and basically for all of these cards, you'll want to lower down the settings if you want a good experience at 4K. One real reason why you might choose an RX 9060 XT 8GB is power consumption. While the 9060 XT 16GB used 182 watts while gaming, the Power Color Reaper only used 155. That puts it below the RTX 5060 Ti 8GB at 160 watts, and basically tied with the RTX 4060 Ti 16GB at 154 watts. And while the RTX 5060 only used 135 watts, that card was slower in all of our testing. That puts the Power Color Reaper as basically tied with the RTX 5060 and 5060 Ti 8GB in terms of efficiency. 
coming in just ahead of the RX 9060 XT with 16 GB and the RX 9070 XT, but is still unable to take the AMD efficiency crown from the RX 9070. And compared to the 5060 Ti in terms of fan noise, the Power Color Reaper does do very well, with the 5060 Ti coming in at 34 dBA, with the Power Color Reaper producing only 27.5 dBA while gaming. A strong showing from such a small card, especially considering it is available with 16 GB. Still, it is a small card and there are physics involved, which does make the Power Color RX 9060 XT Reaper one of the warmest 9060 XT cards we've tested, but we're still talking below 65 degrees C, and it's still cooler than an RTX 5060 Ti. The Power Color Reaper is also the warmest when it comes to memory temperatures, but those higher temperatures shouldn't be an issue in most scenarios. Quickly taking a look at overclocking performance and the Power Color RX 9060 XT Reaper does do pretty well here, at least when you consider its power limitations. At 150 watts at stock or 165 watts when maxed out, it was the only 9060 XT card unable to hit 3 GHz in our overclocking test, but even still it did achieve a performance uplift above 10%, meaning once maxed out you should be able to get better performance than you will get from a 9060 XT 16GB at stock all while using less power. These power limits do vary from card to card, so if you do find an 8GB card with higher power limits, you may be able to eke out even more performance. But how does the 9060 XT 8GB do in terms of value? Since, for the same price, basically everybody would choose 16GB instead. We're doing this comparison at 1080p since that's what AMD recommends, and at that resolution this card does do very well, since the Power Color RX 9060 XT Reaper 8GB at $300 does give you the most performance per dollar at 1080p. It does beat out the RTX 5060 Ti at the same $300 price point, and while that card does have a value add from having access to the whole DLSS suite, it also kind of doesn't, since enabling ray tracing or frame generation does increase the total VRAM usage, which our testing also showed affected the 8GB versions of NVIDIA more than AMD. The RTX 5060 Ti 8GB is in a similar boat as the RTX 5060, though at least this card does provide better performance at stock and at most resolutions, but it does lose much of that performance advantage at higher resolutions or when enabling ray tracing. That can make the $80 difference between the two cards harder to justify. The next closest competitor is the RX 9060 XT with 16 gigabytes, and while that card does provide better performance now, and probably even more so in the future, as games increasingly use more VRAM, at 1080p in 2025 it does provide less performance per dollar. And that's kind of the story for the 9060 XT 8 gigabyte. It provides the best value you can get right now in a 1080p card, and while it does have some competition from NVIDIA at this price point, its biggest competition is from the 16GB variant of the 9060 XT. For a casual gamer or someone on a budget, it does provide a good $300 option, but for most people it's probably worth the extra $50 for a 16GB card.